Hello everybody. Hey, we are going to talk about uh, a concept called the three brains. So the three brains talks about areas of the brain pretty much. Um, there's lots of areas of the brain, but we're just going to break it down from a perspective uh, of understanding the safety and survival mechanism and communication and also thinking as well. When we look at the brain, and I know for some of you thinking, you know, be lucky that some people actually have one brain, but there are three parts of the brain. And the way that um, we look at them is uh, one is the reptilian brain, one is the mammalian brain, and one is the prefrontal cortex. Now, the reptilian brain is really interesting because it is the area that is about um, safety and survival. That's that f fight, flight, or freeze. And it is the evolutionary component that keeps us alive. Now, the reptilian brain itself um, is in pretty much every animal on the planet because the idea of the uh, reptilian brain is to keep you alive. You know, that's all it actually cares about. The next one is the mammalian brain, and you know, as the name suggests, uh, it's basically uh, mammals on the earth. So any animal that nurtures its young. Uh, will have the mammalian component to it and another name for it is the limbic system and uh, that part of the brain and that's the emotional area and then we've got this beautiful thing called the prefrontal cortex now the prefrontal cortex there's only a couple of um, animals on the planet that have the prefrontal cortex that is us uh, dolphins have a prefrontal cortex uh, they're really interesting um, beings and then some chimpanzees have a larger prefrontal cortex uh, than others, and we can sort of see the, um, the association there. When we look at the prefrontal cortex in the mammalian brain, is that the mammalian brain, which is part of the limbic system, is our emotional brain. And the prefrontal cortex is pretty much our thinking brain. So in the prefrontal cortex, a lot of things, uh, abstract concepts, uh, our values are held within there, the uh, imagination and you know, conceptualization. You've also got your problem solving as well that sits around that too. Now the interesting things uh, as human beings is we have this emotional component and the thinking component and we can think about our emotions and then we also get emotional about our thinking. Good to be aware of this. Now, the interesting thing around this is that information flows in pretty much one direction, okay? And it starts with the reptilian brain, moves into mammalian brain, and then that moves to the prefrontal cortex. The way that this has worked out is that a lot of our decisions are basically coming from the reptilian brain initially. And when we look at back at some of the videos that we've done, the purpose of the mind, safety and survival, it's a threat-based mechanism. This is all coming from the reptilian part because the reptilian part just wants to keep you alive. It doesn't care about you succeeding, achieving, challenging yourself, going to uni, running a marathon, doing anything like that that would actually um, give you more meaning and purpose in life. It is just about keeping you alive. So what it's hoping that you can do is that stay alive for the next uh, 24 hours, okay? So what happens normally is that information comes into the reptilian brain. Now, the way that the reptilian brain looks at this information, it asks one question. Is this a threat or is this an opportunity? Now, through neuroscience and fMRIs, what they've found is that five times per second, your reptilian brain is actually going through this questioning. Is this a threat or is this an opportunity? Now, if it sees it as an opportunity, it will then pass it through to the mammalian part of the brain. And another way that I like to look at this is the reptilian brain is like your admin for a business. Mammalian is sort of like uh, middle management. And your prefrontal cortex is like the CEO, okay? Whenever we're talking to people and we want to get stuff through to them, and also if we want to get stuff through to ourselves... We need to follow a flow of information. So it comes in through the reptilian brain. If it looks at the information and says this is a threat, then bop bom sorry, out you go. No more for us. And it's like admin saying, this is just spam. We need to get rid of it and it'll go straight into uh, the rubbish pot and it will get deleted. Now, if it does see it as an opportunity, it will then pass it through to the mammalian brain which is obviously middle management, and it's the emotional centre. 
And the mammalian brain is an interesting thing because the way that it looks at information, it looks at it through authority, social hierarchy, and social order. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean because I'm a doctor, because I'm a lawyer, because I'm someone of higher social standing, that that information is automatically going to get passed through to the CEO or to the prefrontal cortex. What it will do is it'll look at the information and where it's coming from and it'll ask the question, is this person or where this information is coming from, is it an authority in this place? And, you know, sometimes when we look on, you know, Dr. Google, all of a sudden it has a place of authority, so then we pass information through. However, sometimes when we're talking to somebody, you know, because of the, the field that I work in, if I'm working with someone with anxiety, I will tell them how anxious I have felt, and I will tell them what I've done to decrease the anxiety. And all of a sudden, I come from a place of authority. And this is sort of like a trusting mechanism. So can the mammalian brain, can the limbic system, can the emotional part of the brain trust the information that's coming through and where is it coming from? Now, once again, if it is a threat, it will then push it out. It'll go into the recycling bin. It'll be no marked as spam. But if it is an opportunity and it comes from a place of authority, it will then get passed through to the prefrontal cortex. Now, this is the area that I want to work in. Because if I'm working with you, if I'm working with myself or I'm working with anyone else, I need to be talking to the prefrontal cortex because this is the area that has the problem solving, you can conceptualisation, you can use parts of the imagination and you can have these abstract concepts of things called values. And whenever we're doing anything and you know, throughout this process that I'm working with you with is that I'm trying to get you in touch with your values so then you can make decisions based with, on your values so you align with your values and then you have a deeper meaning within your decision-making process and a greater purpose at the end of the day. That's where I'm trying to get when I'm talking to you guys and also that's what I'm trying to get when I'm talking to myself in regards to what is going on. This is a really interesting space and it's a really good concept to um, get into your prefrontal cortex. Now this works in many ways. Number one, it's about how we sell information to people and I'm selling information to you so I have to look at how do I best get that information to your prefrontal cortex? Okay, It's not about what I'm saying, it's how I'm saying it at particular stages. This is also... Uh, relevant to when we're working with other people, when we're talking to our kids, our loved ones, our peers, and even talking to ourselves. So just be aware of this part of the brain because I will bring this up within our sessions and I will pinpoint and say, hey, where are you at the moment? You know, How can we tweak this language? And this will also come into a concept later on called neutral language and neurohacks as well. Okay? Something to think about there, um, really great concept to uh, have in your mind. It relates to everything else that we have done and it will add to what we are going to do. All right. Thanks, guys, and I'll be talking to you and seeing you in the next sessions.